So what I've done here is I try to break down the anatomy of a highly converting website. And it doesn't really matter if you already have an existing website or you're actually trying to build something for your business. But what this does is helps you see your site in a completely different way. Okay. Um, why this is important. Look, COVID-19 has completely changed the retail landscape. Um, right now, businesses that are not online are being forced to go online. Customer behavior is completely changing. Things that used to buy before, they're trying to tighten their purse strings because they don't even have job security anymore. So things are so different than they used to be last year. And if we're not changing with the times, we're not pivoting our business model, we're going to completely lose out. And the retail landscape online, the online retail landscape is going to change so much that it's going to become so highly competitive. And what are we going to do to step up from our competitors? What are we going to do to to actually connect with our audience? How are we going to actually show customers our value proposition for our brand? Uh, we really need to look at this on a very granular level right now. And why am I being chosen to talk about this? Because I'm head of product marketing at Mind Valley. Now, during COVID, actually, we did so much marketing, so many pivots to our brand, our messaging, and everything. Uh, we've seen 30% growth year on year. Our best months have been this last two months. Um, I'm responsible for $50, $50 million in revenue like this year. Um, and I have a broad level of digital marketing experience from like mobile marketing, email marketing, social media marketing, like the breadth of it. I also sell uh, products in five languages, four I don't even speak. Uh, and the beauty about what I'm going to teach you is that I combine science, behavioral psychology, and the art of marketing in a very simple, concise manner that you can just, you can take, absorb, and implement right away. And the truth is, as much as you think business, like, Set products are not cut out for certain markets. It's so difficult to sell. The truth is there are people out there that are selling a paperclip for $1,500. And if they can do it, so can you. Now, what you need to understand is how humans think. Now, we tend to be overcomplicate things. And I've seen this time and time again in all businesses that if I land on a website, so actually I'll tell you a story. Like I have, I get three to five, five emails a day from different service providers that want to partner with Mindvalley. Now I dedicate 20 minutes per service provider, but I spend 20 minutes just to look at their website and check out their brand. And most of them, like 90% of them, their, their value proposition is not clearly mentioned on their website. I spend 20 minutes and I still don't understand what they, what they do and how they can support my brand. So what I do is I just ignore the email. Whereas there's the 10% that actually are super clear with what they can deliver. And I actually engage with them and I book a meeting with them within 24 hours. So that's the difference. The difference is that you're, a lot of people get this completely wrong. They want to say a hundred things to their customers and they try to say them all on the first page of their website. And what they do is they completely lose their customers. Instead, how your customers are thinking is in a very simple, concise, systematic manner. So you need to actually break down your messaging in a very simple, concise, and, and, and clear manner for your customers to understand. So now what I'm going to teach you today is the building blocks to build a highly converting website. And this takes into account the positioning of your product, copy the images you choose, how you use testimonials, how you uh, display the call to action of, of the page, and what you do next. Like, how do you test and innovate, right? Um, so positioning. Positioning is very important. You need to detach yourself from your business. Now, I see this a lot with actually business owners. They, they've invested time, money. Uh, they've built this product. They spend years, sacrificed, and they're so attached to their product, and I don't blame them, but they tend to, uh, they see the product as like the best thing in the world, whereas the customer is just another product. There's thousands of them out there. So how do you communicate the value of your product to your customers in a very clear, concise manner? That's an art. And then it's how does your product compare to your competitors? And how do you, what do you actually display on your website? You know, so understanding this is actually a model that I like to use, which is a very simple model called behaviors and motivators. I mean, motivators and barriers, sorry. Um, so this is something you can do with your product. Now, how do you do this exercise is I've done this based on a jewelry brand, but you can obviously do it with any product, that, uh, any product that you own. It could be a service, it could be a product, but imagine this, right? This jewelry brand, the motivators, what is the motivator for someone to buy this product? So first it's like, they have a hundred designs. They have a hundred unique designs. There's lots of options. Next, they have a reasonable price. They're selling it at quite an affordable price. Now, free shipping, that's a really good value add for customers. I don't have to pay for shipping, so I save money. 
gifting right now COVID who's buying jewelry for themselves where are they going to wear it to so they'll buy it as a gift so highlighting that the fact that there's a gifting option available that's a huge uh, motivator what is the barriers of the product okay so it, I don't the, the product doesn't accept PayPal or uh, so it's they only accept one payment method or the processing time is four days so at buying a gift I need to be I need to plan this four days in advance it's only available in KL so if I'm in Penang I can't send a gift to someone in Penang it's only for women. Men wear jewelry too, but this product is only for women. So now your job is to actually take these barriers and convert them to motivators, right? So for example, if you think of PayPal, it's, it takes 10 minutes to set up a PayPal for business account. So what is holding you back? Convert this to a motivator. So this is what you can do to, for your product. Now let's take this and apply it to a website. Now this could have, this is how, what you would need to do if you are planning a website, or even if you have a current website, look at your website right now and look at the motivators and barriers for someone to sign up on your website and do this objectively, do this with your team, do this with your family, do this with your friends, just do this exercise. And I promise you, it will change the way you see your website. Like the motivators of this website, right? 100 unique designs, reasonable price, free shipping, gifting. This is the stuff I really want to be highlighting on the main page of my website because this is what will convince people to, to, to buy or explore or take the next step. Where is the barriers? Now, this is the mistake I see again on websites. Pop-ups in the first two seconds of a website does not make any sense because someone hasn't even seen your value proposition. You're telling them to take action, like sign up, give you, your, give you their email address. It's not going to happen. So you need to play this up really carefully and put this on the next two minutes, like give, give someone some time to actually surf your website and digest what you have to offer. Now, shipping policy and return policy. A lot of websites, this is not easy to find. So if I'm a customer, I want to know how, how soon will I get this product? Or if, what if I don't like it? Can I return it? Um, this needs to be clearly visible, um, easy to find. So if this is not, then that's a barrier and you need to make it a motivator. So this is basically what I like to do with every single product that I have and I, every single website. Like we have hundreds of websites. It's crazy because every product has like six, six pages. So um, uh, this is what I like to do with every single product, every single page to actually see if I'm conveying the right message or is, is the, am I trying to dilute the message by saying too many things at one time. So now that you have... The, the, the main important elements that you need to highlight on your website, how do you write copy? Like a lot of us have copywriters, like I have a team of copywriters, but not everybody has the, the liberty of working with copywriters, right? And a lot of times I know small business owners, you have to write the copy yourself. Trust me, I've been there. I've owned several small businesses in the past and I had to write the copy myself and it's not easy if you don't know how to write copy. Now, what you need to know about writing good copy is A, First, you need to develop your voice. Now, who are you speaking to? Who is, who's your audience? Is it millennials? Then you need to have a quirky, fun voice. Or is it corporates? Then you need to have a more traditional, more sophisticated voice. So identify your audience first and then develop the tone of voice for that audience. Next, understand the user's intent. So this is so simple, but a lot of people get this wrong, where you need to see what, are, what, what is the intent for someone coming to your site? Now, take Zara, for example. If a man goes to Zara Zara's main page, they have probably two things in mind that they, they, they want to do, two actions. A, they want to buy a staple like t-shirts or jeans, so that's a rebuy. Or they want to look at the latest trends because they want to update their wardrobe. It's two things. So can these two things be displayed clearly on the main page of your site? Yes, it can. But the question is, you need to understand why do people come to your website? Is it, are these people new people and they're trying to explore your service because re people that keep repeat, that, you know, the repeat visitors, they don't really come to your website, they engage with you somewhere else. So you really need to understand the user's intent and then customize the content and write copy for that intent. Next is you need to plan your pages and you need to have one CTA per page, not two, not three, not five, one. So for example, if you come to this, like you map out your pages here. So there's going to be a main page. There's going to be an about us page. There's going to be a blog. There's going to be the services that we offer. What is the CTA you want to highlight? Like for example, the main page might be create an account, it might be book a call, but they should be one CTA that you highlight. The next thing is about us. Now, people that come to, you, to the about us page, they might read about our company culture and we want them to join the team. So it might be like join our team and that's the CTA. It shouldn't be create an account. It should be a join the team, but you need to pick one and you need to highlight that one CTA. So this is what you need to do to actually decide what pages you should have and you should refrain from having unnecessary pages. Try to keep it as simple and easy for your customers to understand as possible. And your job is to navigate your customer through your pages to the right call to action. So for example, I might 
drive someone from the main page to my store page where they can view all my products. I might drive them from the main page to book a call, but you need to guide them. So the next step is use benefits, don't use features. And this is a really good example of how to use benefits. For example, small business accounting software, that is a feature. But then what is the benefit of this? People, because your customers are not buying the features, they're not buying your product, they're buying your product for the, the pain and the solution it provides. So you need to be very clear of what solution does your product, um, uh, what solution does it, does it provide? What pain does it solve? And you need to actually, this is a good exercise to map it out, like write down all the features and write down, convert the features to benefits and use those benefits in your copy. Uh, if you look at FreshBooks, they do it really, really well. They convert all their features to benefits. Next, images. There's an art to using images and you need to use images really, really effectively. Human beings process images 60,000 times faster than they, the, than they process text. Now, how can you use images really effectively? A, use trust badges. So a lot, 17% of people abandon your site because they don't feel they can trust your site. They don't feel they can trust your business. Adding trust badges can boost your, your uh, conversion rates of your page by up to 30%. So this is a, a go, please use trust badges. Next, always have your images on the left and your copy on the right, okay? That's how human beings process information. The right hemisphere of your brain is used to process emotional information while the left is used to process logical information. So if you actually break down that science, all your images should be on the left and all your copies should be on the right. And if you go to a lot of top brands right now, I promise you, go check out the order menu, go check out uh, how they display products. You'll always see the price and everything on the right and the images on the left. Next, mimic interaction. Use images that actually can show, give people a simulated experience of owning your product. So let them feel like they can hold your product, they can engage with your product. So if you have a book or an app, let that show a hand holding the app. If you have a mug, show um, the, the handle of the mug on your right so it can simulate someone holding the mug because a lot of people are right-handed. Uh, if your product is a book, hold, show a hand holding the book but try to mimic interaction as much as possible so people can actually feel and simulate in their head owning your product. Positive emotion. So this is a test done by HiRISE. They added a human face, a happy, positive human face on their website and boosted conversions by 102%. People buy emotion. People don't buy features. People don't buy your brand. People, buy how, uh, people actually buy the experience, the emotion, how your brand can make them feel. So keep that in mind when you're choosing images for your website. Testimonials. This, everyone knows it's so important. Everyone knows this, but they really don't uh, utilize this as much as they should. For example, when you're adding testimonials, add the human face, make it big as possible, as big as possible, because that just adds credibility and authenticity to your testimonial. And this can boost conversion rates up to 35%. That's huge. Next, as seen on logos, do some PR, get on a magazine, get on a newspaper, and just add these logos there. The more logos, the better, because it shows credibility. Outcomes. This is something we've done at Outco uh, in Mind Valley. We've taken it to the next level. So, for example, we have a product that's a health and fitness product, and what we did is we divided it. Uh, we divided all the testimonials per benefit. So now, when people do take this 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 program, this health and fitness program, they don't just lose weight, but they actually clear their up their skin. They, their hair grows better. They um, they have more energy during the day. So what we did is we put stories of more energy and clustered the testimonials, stories of, of, of better hair, clustered the testimonials. So we did all this kind of stuff and we've seen a 38% a boost in conversion rate. Uh, Marisha, just, just a moment, uh, yeah. just to interject here really quickly. Um, some of our attendees are wondering if you could just slow down the speed of talking sorry. because I'm finding it a little bit hard to catch at the moment. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right, I'll let you do your thing. I will skedaddle out of here. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, guys, I'm so sorry. I tried to put so much stuff in this test, this presentation because I felt like one component will not be enough and you need all of this. Um, call to action. Okay, so the call to action is the most important thing on your website, literally the most important thing. Now, how do you, you, you use a proper call to action? This is an example. A call to action should, should be a button. It should be clear. It should pop from the background uh, and it should have a clear benefit. So if you see this, sign up for free. That's a benefit. I sign up, it's for free. Uh, maybe download, um, um, get, get five hacks to optimize your, your landing page. Uh, that's a benefit. So the button should have a clear benefit. It should pop from your main sales page and it should stand out with a lot of white, white space around it. 
um, this is a great example of a, a website. You can see the navigation. Um, there's, no, there's no unnecessary um, pages. The description is super clear, call to action super clear. Uh, CTAs are, are very visible. They pop from the landing page. So this is what you, you need to do. When, uh, this is what you need to consider when you're, when you're defining your, land, your call to action. Your call to action should also be one. As you can see, there's not a hundred. There's just one main call to action. Um, and the next thing is urgency. Now, if you can do a merge between your call to action, that means the, 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 the CTA of your page, and add a, la a layer of urgency around that CTA, you're gonna see a huge boost in conversion rate. And for example, uh, you can look at things like Z Zalora, you can look at things like uh, booking.com, they all say, oh, there's only five pieces left, or there's two slots left, or um, X number of people signed up today, like things like that. If you just add that copy around your call to action, you're going to see a massive boost in conversions and click-throughs on that, on that button. Um, and what you need to realize is that the step, step one is to build a website, right? And your job doesn't end when you build a website. Actually, your job begins when you build a website. What you need to do then is actually innovate on your website. Go see what customers are saying about your brand. Go talk to your customers, keep learning, uh, attend these web seminars, uh, A-B test. I use DWO, it's a tool to A-B test. It's such a simple, easy to use tool. I, use, I also use heat maps, um, which is a really, really easy to use tool, which tells you how your uh, users interact with your page. It gives you like this whole heat map on where they click, how they scroll, uh, so you can actually understand intent better. But your job is to is to start innovating on this page, optimizing this page, improving the call to action, changing the copy, seeing what works best and actually making the page convert like a machine. Um, so what you've learned today, I'm gonna summarize everything since <laughs> I spoke too fast. Um, what you learned today is that your customers think in a very systematic, simple manner and we tend to overcomplicate things and we need to actually simplify our message down to a granular level, down to clear benefits when we're communicating to our customers. A really good um, way to communicate the benefits is to do this exercise called the motivators and barriers, where you actually break down your website or your product into clear motivators and barriers. Why would someone buy this product? Why would someone, um, what would get someone to convert on this page and what would stop them from converting? What, what questions do, uh, would they have on this page when they, when they land on it? Um, next, you understand uh, the four steps of copywriting. So how to actually build your tone of voice? How do you communicate clear, clear um, benefits instead of just communicating features? Um, and then how to, uh, how to use images, like how to actually mimic interaction? How do you how to use choose images where uh, it shows happy customers engaging with your product? Um, how to um, um, what was the next one? Yeah, how to um, just choose images that, that convert and how to use more images instead of less images. How to put images on the left versus the right because people tend to process the left with more, um, with more emotion. And uh, how to use testimonials, the power of using testimonials and how using testimonials with a huge face of your customer on it can actually boost cost, uh, conversion rates up to 30 to 40%. And then uh, crafting highly converting CTAs. Your CTAs should be super simple. They should pop from your page. The CTAs should be crafted with a clear benefit. So the copy should say, um, uh, get this, get this, you know, get a, um, uh, this ebook, um, get five hacks to optimize your, your landing page, uh, shop from a, a thousand different options, stuff like that, right? And then uh, the importance of optimizing your page, the fact that your job only begins when you have a page and you can keep iterating, keep optimizing, keep learning, keep growing the page because it's essentially going to be your money maker. So that's it for me. I'm going to take questions right now because I know you guys probably have tons. Okay. So here we go. Uh, we have two questions here. Uh, the first question is, what is CTA short for? So a CTA is, call, is called a call to action. And a call to action is essentially that, that action that you want someone to take at every step of the journey. So when a, a user lands on your page, you want them to take the first action. So on your main page, there should be a button that says, 
shop here or discover 10,000 products or whatever. And that is your call to action. You want them to take that action. And in the next page might have another call to action, but essentially a CTA is the action you want your users to take. And usually it's in a form of a button. Right. Okay. Um, now I have a quick question just to continue on to this one. Now you mentioned earlier saying that, um, you know, when you go to a website at first, you shouldn't be bombarded with CTAs, like sign up for your newsletter immediately, correct? Because I yeah. have noticed some websites doing that. So what would be the appropriate time to kind of like prompt the user like, hey, sign up for our newsletter? So personally, I would use Google Analytics to see how much time someone spends on the page. And I would do that pop up either when someone leaves the page or within the first two minutes because the average person spends about two minutes on a page. So do it in two minutes, let them consume, digest your page, see what you offer, and then give them, uh, give them the pop up to create an account if that's, that's the call to action you want them to take. And you can also take it a level further by giving them a benefit. So sign up now and get 20, 25%. That's what Zalora mm. does. Or sign up now and we'll send you amazing free content to your email. So should craft that with a clear benefit. Right, right, right. Okay, that makes sense. Um, okay, so our next question is, isn't testimonial and outcome referring to the same thing? So a testimonial is essentially a review that customers write. Now, when I say outcomes, outcomes is the benefit that you get by consuming the product. So my, as a customer, I might write and say, I experienced all these things, uh, the, the, the author was great and everything. But then what I want people to, to understand is the outcome of consuming the product, which is clearer skin. So that's what we did. We actually broke it down to outcomes and crafted the testimonials based on the outcome. The testimonial might have 10 outcomes. But I want, I want customers to, to actually absorb outcome by outcome, outcome by outcome. Because, because what this does, yeah. yeah, because when you're buying something, think about, think about the, the, the customer, right? People mm -hmm. buy because they see, they want to increase their perceived value. I want to know, we're, we're all value buyers. I want to know that if I spend $100 with you, I'm going to see, I'm going to ex get ex ex like a lot of things in return. So if I yeah. divide it based on outcomes, I'm going to, from a user, I'm getting five outcomes for one price. It seems like a, like a bargain. And then there are more. Yeah, it's a good deal. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like a better deal than just saying, I, this product will improve your health. Mm. Okay. Uh, so we have a question from Mel Sam and Mel wants to know how to ensure your website is not hacked or attacked and basically how do you protect it? So um, if you're, depends what you're doing. Are you building a website from scratch? Are you using an agency? Are you using a platform that already has security elements in it? But essentially what you should do is you should host everything on a, a really secure server and you should, um, you should use, just use a reliable server and, um, and, and make sure that you're using all the security protocols. Now, I'm not a security expert, by the way, I'm a marketer. So, so my job is to write copy and, and, and convert people on the page. But yeah, for sure, have a secure server, make sure all your information is, is GDPR protected, your customer's information is protected, it's, it's hosted correctly. And if you're using an out, like a, a third party um, service provider or something or an agency, you'll probably have, um, the, they'll have the tools for it. Hmm. Okay. And our next question is, which heat map application or program would you recommend? I would highly, 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 highly recommend Hotjar because I use it and I've tried many others and they don't work as well as Hotjar. And the beauty about Hotjar is that it tells you everything from how far your customers scroll on your page. So you'll know if your page is mm -hmm. too long. It'll tell you where they click. So you know what elements and copy are engaging them as more. You'll know where... Um, just their behavior, like uh, you, you can even do screen recordings to see how they engage with your site, like literally every single customer, where they're from and how they engage. So you can actually see a lot of patterns. And so uh, that program is called Hotjar? Hotjar. Again? Okay, yeah. all right, cool. It's about $80 a month. Ah, okay. okay. For a pro yeah, account. So I mean, I'm using a pro <laughs> account, so. All right, Jillian is nice enough to give us the uh, website in the, in the questions here. Thank you, Jillian. Amazing. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so our next question is, can fonts make a boost to the page? Oh, okay, so the question is, can fonts boost the page? Yes, it can. So I would, I would really stay away from using a lot of cursives. The font that we like to use in Mindvalley is Gilroy. Um, and why we use Gilroy is because it's super easy to understand. There's like different even layers of Gilroy that you can use, like hyperboles, like light. There's mm -hmm. different la layers of it, but it's a really easy to understand font. And bear in mind, customers come mobile, come desktop. Gilroy can be seen, it's easy to read on both desktop and mobile. So I would use Arial, Times, New Roman, 
your voice easy to easy to read fonts not 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 high don't so um this is the this debate you're going to have with your if you have a, a team like i have a team of designers copywriters um and all of them and they always have this debate one pe one person wants to make the website look pretty and one wants to make the website look highly converting so there's that difference and it's not about making it look pretty it's actually about making it highly converting Correct, because fonts like Times New Roman and Aerial, they're actually compatible on most laptops and screens. So I think that's exactly. more important in, in, instead of having a pretty website where nobody can actually read the content that you're writing. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. It's not about a pretty website. It's actually about a really easy to understand and digestible website. Don't let your yeah. users think, just let them consume. Mm, okay. Thank you. All right, so we have a question from Zeta, and um, Zeta is, uh, is uh, actually saying, I'm a little confused on the mimic interaction portion. Could you elaborate more? Is that uh, to offer a comparison with a competitor? So no, this is not about the competitors. This is about your product. So when customers see your product, it could be like, example, a necklace, or it could be um, a, a phone. It's not good enough to just keep your phone hanging in the air or lying on a table. They can't simulate owning your phone, but what they're doing is when they're looking at your page, they're imagining themselves owning it, wearing your product, engaging with your product. So if you show um, a right hand and a phone in the right hand, most people are right-handed, so they can simulate owning it because it looks the same to them. But now if you're right-handed and you see a phone held by a left hand, there's gonna be a disconnect because mm -hmm. you can't simulate owning it. So the question is that, try to when you're choosing an image you could make the image as simple as just a phone like laying against a, uh, um, a, a stand but it's not going to simulate owning the phone instead use a hand to, to simulate that use a hand holding a cup use a ha right hand holding jewelry or use jewelry on a, someone's neck so they can simulate like they can imagine how the jewelry will look on their neck you know mm. so it's it's just about thinking about the ownership experience of the product not just showing the product in its in its beauty yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. But I know for like uh, websites like Zalora, they choose to do both. You know, they tend to put it on a model, for example, like uh, the clothing and attire. They tend to put it on a model, and at the same time, they also show it like on the mannequin itself. So I think like um, for our attendees, they'll be able to do both, right? Um, to get the same effect out of it uh, in terms of yeah. ownership. Yeah, it really depends okay. on what product you have, and you have to design that based on your product. Mm, okay. Uh, our next question from Albert is, could you elaborate more on the last part, such as the A-B test? Thanks. So A-B testing is basically, okay, there's a site they call VWO. It's such an easy to use site. And what you do is you upload your, you put a snippet of code on your page. And then what you do is this simulates your whole entire page and you can change copy. So for example, if I'm on, I have a landing page, like my sales page, and then on the, the headline of my page says a thousand designs, okay? And I want to change it to free gifting available, you know, like or free shipping available. I can test both copies and see which has a higher conversion rate. And imagine doing that with every single part of your website to see how you can grow the, the, the conversion rate of your website. And as you saw from my presentation, small things can have a massive impact. Just changing the style of images, just changing the style of copy can actually boost your conversion rates like 30%. And that's what you want to be doing. If you really want to make your websites machines, you this is how you do it. Like I've grown websites from like a conversion rate of 1.2% to like 5% just by doing A-B testing on the site. Just take an element, try two different variations of the element and see which works better for you. Okay. And our next question is, oh, we have a lot of questions. <laughs> People are just going off. Okay. Yeah. Um, our next question is, uh, are there any tips to create urgency on your website? So it depends what kind of product you have. I use a countdown timer. So I give them seven days to buy the product at, at a discounted price. You can also say a few pieces left. You can also say, um, you can use bonuses. You can say, if you buy today, I'll give you X. Um, like mm -hmm. I'll give you an, this extra bonus. So there's a lot of ways to use urgency on a website. And okay. it actually, it's crazy. It's crazy. My whole business model is based on urgency. So it's crazy how highly converting the, this, this tactic is. And if you can find a solution for your site, I would highly recommend using it. All right, and our next question is, uh, should a website have a video for an easy illustration of the service? If yes, can you advise uh, how we can create an animation video for free? So yes, uh, there is uh, there's video for sure works really well because there's different types of people that visit your site. 
people are mainly skimmers. People like some people like to read, some people like to watch videos. There are different types of people. So we use both actually. We use images and videos, and your video should be again really clear. Don't try to make it so overcomplicated. Actually, try to show the value that you're providing to your users, and the video should be based on the motivators. So the motivators mm -hmm. and various exercises. Take those motivators and make a video. Trust me, that's going to work like crazy. Um, now the the animation tool that um, so we. We, there are a lot of tools out there. I'm unable to actually recommend one to you because we actually shoot all our videos in-house and we actually edit them in-house. So I don't actually use any of these animation tools. Uh, but I know like how the Canva does social media copy. There is a competitor to Canva that does videos and they do a really good job. Mm -hmm. If you write to me on LinkedIn, I will send you the website. Okay, guys, you know what to do. Write to her on LinkedIn. <laughs> she has her credentials right there on screen. So just take note of that. Uh, thank you. And uh, we have another question. And it is, uh, this person is asking, do you suggest to remove barriers from the website, even if it's real information? I don't suggest to, rem it's not necessary to remove barriers. It's necessary to address barriers. So you look at the barriers, you see, can you convert them to a motivator? Because your goal as a business owner is to remove objections. Objections stop people in their track and create friction from purchasing. Your job is to remove as many objections as possible or convert them to benefits. So for example, if, um, if, it's, if it's going to take four days for you to deliver something, be honest and say it's going to take four days, you know, but then say that we're going to make sure that you're, you know, we, we, um, we package your product. It's going through this, like, uh, like, you know, for COVID-19, we're going through all the, the safety protocols to make sure you get your product mm -hmm. converted into a, be a benefit. But the question is to take, to be aware of the barriers so you can address them instead of, of not, not even knowing that they exist. Yeah. Okay, that's true. Um, so our next question is, we've got a lot. I feel like in the moment we answer more come in. Okay, so our question is, what testing optimization apps have you found to be cost effective? Um, optimization apps. Um, so VWO so far is, is the best one that I, I've used. There's also, you can also use if uh, Google Optimize. They have a free, a free service that you can use that's really, really good. But you can do five tests at a time. For small business owners, it's perfect. It's really, really perfect. So Google Optimize. Okay. Now our next question is from Casey Ching. And uh, Casey would like to know, can you tell me more about the image and text on the left and right? So this is how the brain processes information. Now the right hemisphere of your brain processes um, emotions while the left hemisphere of your brain processes, um, processes logic, which is why actually how I, it's, it's, it's a whole anatomy thing. But if you, if you put your images to your left, your right brain will process, process the left image. That's how the brain works. And it processes emotion. So if you put a happy person, your brain will process it better. If you notice all my slides, image, it is images to the left and copy to the right. And mm -hmm. then, um, and then whereas the left brain produces logic. So uh, if you put prices, you put information, your brain, the, that brain is more equipped to process logic. If you put it the other way around, your brain is, has to do more, use more brain power and do more thinking, which you don't want. You don't want your customers to use their brain power, do too much thinking. You want them, you want to make, it as frictionless and as easy as possible for them to process and take the next step. Correct, because you want things to be easy for them and that uh, yeah. just makes them more inclined to buy whatever you're selling, you know? Or, yeah. Um... <laughs> yeah, it's okay, true. You want to guide them. Yeah? And, yeah, you okay. want to guide them. Mm -hmm. I see. You want to guide them. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, Casey, I hope that answers your question. Now, Jackie would like to know, where can I learn copywriting? Okay, where can you learn copywriting? Um, I would really, okay, so a, a really good tip uh, for copywriting is there's a lot of good copywriters out there. You can read some, a, a bunch of blogs, free blogs, and you'll learn. But where I really love to learn copywriting from is reading what my customers say about my product in their language. So um, how they describe the product, what do they say is the benefits, what do they say? For example, like when I sign an author for Mindvalley, um, I actually see, I go to, I go to Amazon, read all the book reviews, like all of them, and I see what they say. And they'll usually say, I love this author because they, they can take complex uh, concepts and make it into really easy to digest um, principles. I like this author because they add this layer of humor to their work. So based on that language, I just use that language in my, in my copy because you want to use the, the language of your customers. You don't want to, tr like imagine if you're a university and you try to make your your coffee so quirky and sassy and fun it <laughs> doesn't work it doesn't work you're not speaking to the choir you know you yeah. need to you need to make your you need to use the language of your customers as much as you can 
Um, and good copywriting principles, again, if there's so many people that I follow from Alex Mendozian to, um, uh, there's a whole bunch of people, uh, Jason Flatline, um, if you write to me, I can send you a couple of blogs that I, I, I think are really, really good for you to read uh, if you're starting out. Okay, Jackie, so you'll know, uh, just contact Marisha and she'll send you that list. And to everyone else who is watching as well, uh, if you'd like to know about uh, how to uh, learn copywriting, uh, just send Marisha a quick email or you can contact her on LinkedIn. Uh, basically, like I said, all her credentials are here on screen right now. And our next question is from uh, Avinash. And Avinash is asking, should a website have a video for an easy illustration of the service? And if yes, can you advise uh, on how we can create an animation video for free? So like I said before, um, yes, it should, for sure it should. Um, I, the thing is we create all our, we do all our animations in house. We have a whole team dedicated to it. So it's really difficult for me to, to, to um, advise on the right platform for you. But I did go to an online conference and I saw this amazing uh, platform that did these videos and they were really, really reasonable. So I'm going to, if you just write to me on LinkedIn, I will send you the link to that platform. It's something like Canva, um, which, which a lot of small business owners are using. Even I use Canva. I mean, it's amazing. So um, it's something like that, but just for video. So they give you these templates and they're so easy to use and you can just slot in different things. You can create these really easy animations. Um, so I'll, I'll send you that link. Okay, coolio. Um, our next question is, what's your advice to replace testimonials and if it's a new product or startup? So it, you should always have testimonials. If it's a new product or startup, um, ask your friends, like give, your, the, give the service to your friends, family or whatever, ask them to review it and see what they think. Um, just give it, find experts, like go to an expert, give them the product and say, try this out and tell me know what you think. The better testimonials you get, the more testimonials you get, the better it is going to be for your landing page. Just to give you an example, so my friend started this baking business, right? And she has no mm -hmm. testimonials. It's a brand new baking business. All she did was she made like six cookies, sent it to like all the influencers she knows, and they all wrote about her on Insta stories, all of them. And now she's, she needs to buy three ovens because oh she can't gosh. even cope with the orders. Like it's as simple as that. All she did was give mm -hmm. six cookies to different influencers and they're micro influencers, like thousand, two thousand people on Instagram. So there's really no reason why you shouldn't have testimonials. You just need to find a way to get them. So if you can, if it's a service that you can provide to experts and see what they think of it and ask them to give a testimonial for, for using your service or something like that, an hour of your time for a testimonial is totally worth it. Yeah. Um, okay. So we have time for, I think maybe another one to two questions. And uh, this one comes from Tech Hui. Now Tech Hui is asking, where is the best place uh, we can feature the article section on under the slider images on the main page perhaps? Where's the best place we feature articles on under the slider images on the main page? Um, again, it really depends on the call to action you want your users to take. Do you want them to consume the articles? Then yes. If you don't want them to consume the articles, then it should be separate. So it really depends on what you want them to do. Because if you, if they come to your, imagine the user, they come to your main page, but you actually want them to buy, but you're sending them to articles. They're going to consume the articles. Now, mm. how many tabs do you have on your browser opened right now? You have 50 tabs. How many messages do you get on a daily basis? You probably get 20 messages like in an hour. So your user is going to be distracted while they read your article. So it really depends um, what action you want them to take. And bear in mind that their attention span is so little that you want them to take, you want, them to, you want to guide them to one action at a time, not, not to five. I see. Okay. And I think we have time to squeeze in one last question before I let you go. And this one comes from Jody. Jody is asking, can we download images from the website? Is it legit? No, it's not. You can't do that. I mean, you can get sued to do, for doing that. You should probably go to shutterstock.com and buy some images or you can get royalty free images that you can use. There's a lot of sites that have that. Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of like, uh, competitors to Shutterstocks that also do uh, a lot cheaper uh, images that you can, you can buy and use. Or just take your own, like get a friend, spend a day, take some photos. It, uh, in fact, the best converting images are the really raw, um, mm -hmm. re real ones. Like if you look at my sales pages right now, I'm completely moving away from Shutterstock to use real images of customers, real images of our brand, our office, everything. Because I think the, ra the rawness actually adds a lot of value. And it is like to a certain point also add a lot of relatability between like, you know, the, the, the customer and the product as well. And I think that's what we're trying to also highlight besides ownership as well. And yeah. I totally agree with you on that. So um, I think Marisha, I have to let you go now. We have so many questions left unanswered, but that's all the time we have for today. Yeah.
Okay, so yeah. um, if you guys want to write to me, follow me on Instagram, or write to me on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. I'm really sorry for speeding this up. I had so much information. I just couldn't digest it. Um, and also, if you, I, I had an extended version of my slides, like the long version I had to cut short yesterday. So um, this, uh, it's all on here. If you want to download them, you can take a, a screenshot of this slide and you can just get the slides. Well, I personally think you did really, really well. And to be like the first speaker for the day, I think it's pretty difficult, especially to be engaging. And it was, it was such a good presentation. It was very clear, very concise. So Marisha, thank you so much for joining thank us so here much, today guys. at Red 2020. Good luck. good luck with your all businesses. Right. Okay, thank you. Exobytes. Grow your business online.